All right, guys, uh, we are in the warmth of the Buick Regal GS AWD, and I'm here with James Walter. Yep. And James, what's your title? I'm an all-wheel drive engineer for the Buick Regal. So you actually did the all-wheel drive system. You fine-tuned yeah. it. You calibrated it, man. Yep. We did all the calibration, the fine-tuning, and hardware development on the system. And in case you're wondering why Nathan's in the back, it's because he's navigating, and I'm going to be chatting with uh, James here as we get lost. <laughs> Outside of well, uh, navigating, you don't say that until after we're lost. <laughs> So this system uh, seems to uh, work really well, especially with these dedicated snow tires. Tell me how you calibrate it. How, how is it set up? Which way is it allocating power? Kind of walk me through the whole process. So it's an active all-wheel drive system, which means that uh, it's electronically controlled. We can pretty much send anywhere from zero to 2,700 newton meters to the rear axle. And what that means is it gives us a lot of flexibility with how we allocate uh, torque to the rear wheels. Um, generally what we're going for in a high mu situation, so dry surfaces, is enough power to the rear to keep a neutral hand. Uh, it is a, supposed to be a sports car and therefore we want as uh, neutral handling as we can. In let, let, let me show these guys something, speaking of neutral handling, check this out guys. What kind of handling do you get when you're on a river? <laughs> <laughs> River that's the same size as many lakes. Yeah, this is a huge river. Is this the Ottawa River? This is the Ottawa oh, River. Yeah, it is enormous. Uh oh, uh, proximity sensor. I think it's detecting uh, the snow, snow that, that, that Nathan uh, jammed into it when he ran into a snowbank. I didn't run into any snowbank. I graced a snowbank. It's a completely different thing. You, you, just, you just gave it a little kiss, didn't you? Just I a little, it. just a smooch. Mm -hmm. Alright, we got a little bit of a hill here. Yep, we're gonna make the left. Will it go up the hill? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, well let's try. Oh, I'm gonna make it harder here. Wait, now, okay. Right. Oh, oh, it's, doing it, it's working. It's, oh, look at that. You know what? No it, problem. I can feel the rear end moving. And these are, and, and we are rolling on 20s, is that right? Yeah, these are 20 inch tires uh, with snow tires. Snow tires are acquired here in the great province of Quebec. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get the tail end out. I am floored right now. The tail will not come out. Well, oh, yeah? yeah, a little bit. It came out a little bit, not much. Is that on purpose? I mean, it is. So, you know, we are trying to make it so that when the driver is uh, trying to be frisky with the car, we will let them uh, within bounds. Uh, so, in a situation like that where you had the pedal floored, uh, driver's intent is not that you're going to be driving like your grandma. It's I want to have some fun. So we'll we let the back end come out, give you a little more control with the throttle but the electronic stability control and traction control will still come in to save your bacon if you think you're Michael Schumacher and aren't. And there is a GS button here and there is a sport button and there is also a traction can, um, um, control? control button off, right? Yep. So you can disable, you can, you can sharpen up the car. So what happens if I hit the GS and sport button? Normally on dry pavement, that sharpens up everything, makes it more sporty. Yep, yep. so the GS and sport button will uh, alter the the damper cowl, the steering cowl, and the all-wheel drive cowl. So essentially what happens with the all-wheel drive is when you hit the GS or the Sport button is we will allocate more torque to the rear of the car in a given situation and allow it to be a little uh, more tail happy, if you will. Um, the big advantages of that are actually on dry pavement where you can push the car right up to its limits and keep a neutral handling demeanor. If you're in a corner and you have the throttle buried instead of plowing the front end, we'll pretty well track the line that you intend to follow. So you were saying one of the cool things is, or one of the hard questions you could ask is how much power does it allocate front to rear, left to right? And you said that's a hard question to answer because that changes based on a yep. lot of factors. Exactly. The, uh, with a system like this that's electronically controlled, hydraulically actuated, 
Uh, we have the ability to go from zero newton meters of torque to the rear axle to 2,700 newton meters of torque at the rear axle and everything in between. So what happens is the vehicle is, or the rear drive module, which is the heart of the all-wheel drive, is constantly taking in signals from the vehicle, wheel speeds, yaw rates, longitudinal and latitudinal acceleration rates, as well as your driver inputs. What is the steering wheel angle? What is the uh, Excel pedal position? And it's using all those to determine how much torque we need to send to the rear and side to side on the rear axle in order to fulfill the driver's wish. Uh, keep the vehicle st stable, uh, to be able to launch a vehicle effectively if, if you're on uh, snow and ice. Um, just keep it where you're pointing it. Yeah. Just floor it here and see what happens, right? We are on ice and snow, slow tires, and let's see what this bad boy will do. Just floor it. And I get the little light that blinks that tells me stability and track control are activated, but it just goes straight. Yep. And gives me as much power as... I have traction, right? Exactly. So with the traction control system, we're essentially we're limiting the engine torque to what the road can handle. So the end result of that is you get a nice smooth drive away, not a whole lot of uh, tire slip, but we're not cutting back the engine torque so much that you're slow off the line. We're using every bit of grip that is available. And with an all-wheel drive, that amount of grip is doubled because now you're driving all four tires instead of just the front two. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I fancy myself an okay driver, but my reaction times are probably much slower than the system's reaction time, right? I mean, these oh, things absolutely. are within... Uh, absolutely. The This system, it's a hydraulically actuated system, so what that means is we can uh, preemptively apply torque, so we don't necessarily have to wait for wheel slip. In a situation like we had back there where we were launching the vehicle, we're sending 50% of the engine torque to the rear of the car before you do anything. So, so as it, soon it's it's anticipating. It's anticipating. Yeah, yep. yeah. And then uh, let's say we're going around a turn, and all of a sudden one of the wheels starts to lose traction. How long before the system intervenes and says, "Okay, this wheel has no traction. He wants to go left. The car's going straight. You know, you get it up in that big snow pile ahead. How long before that interaction happens?" Uh, in the car. So our reaction our reaction time on the all-wheel drive from the point of where we detect tire slip to we are actually applying torque or not applying torque depending on what the situation calls for is about a hundred milliseconds. Whoa. A tenth of a second. So yeah. it's done. It seems like um, all-wheel drive has become something that uh, luxury buyers expect, right? Yep. So it, it's something that I think Buick has to provide if you're trying to compete with Audi. Yep. If you're it, trying to compete with some of the European brands. No, it's absolutely it's absolutely a great selling point in the vehicle. And one thing I think gets lost to a lot of consumers though is within the realm of all-wheel drive is there's a lot of gradation in what kind of systems you have. Um, what we have in here is. A Haldex Gen 4 system. It's really kind of at the upper end of what is available out there for all-wheel drive technology. It's hydraulically actuated. You can do preemptive torque. You can uh, change torque levels on the fly. There's no mechanical set torque split that you have to have like on an uh, old Audi A4 Quattro system. Um, it comes with an integrated electronic limited slip differential, which gives you a whole nother degree of stability control and traction ability. Uh, and also with it being a hydraulically actuated system, it's thermally very robust. In the all-wheel drive world, thermal performance, basically keeping the clutches in the all-wheel drive cool, is a major uh, concern. Whenever you slip clutches, you create heat, the heat's got to go somewhere. Today's, a lot of today's probably not a problem. <laughs> believe it or not, yeah. even when it's cold, really, you can you can you, get that hot. Yep. Yeah. But okay. with the hydraulic system, you're constantly circulating fluid throughout the clutch pack, which helps keep it 
quite cool. Now this uh, Munich Regal is built on the, so the Epsilon platform, right? Which is yep. a global GM platform, which for all you European fans and viewers, it's also the Opel Insignia. Correct. So the question is, how does this differ from an Insignia? You said that uh, GM develops it jointly with Opel, but that yep. you tune it specifically for uh, North America. Yep, so we do all the hardware tuning, or all the software tuning here in the U.S., specifically for the U.S. market. Um, you know, the Opel Insignia, it's a great all-wheel drive system. It's a great all-wheel drive tuning, but there are differences in what is expected from the North America market as far as noise and vibration and handling expectations. So how is it different? I mean, I mean, how is this different from an Insignia if I were to get in the thing from a noise and vibration handling point of view? The So in Europe, uh, it's tuned to bring on uh, a lot more trying to think of what's the best way to answer this. Uh-oh. Now he's getting political on us. Come yeah. on, Jim. It's, I bet you it's sportier. I'm thinking, yeah. I would guess it's sportier and it's a little bit more taut, right? It's a little bit more uh, uh, sporty. I would say in the base mode, that is true. When you put this thing in GS, it's very close to what the Opel Insignia all-wheel drive is. Another thing to keep in mind is they have a few different powertrains over there um, that we don't have here. A diesel, yeah. uh, 2.8 liter D6, that's in the OPC, yeah. um, and you have to vary your all-wheel drive tuning based on your powertrain and that's our, in the vehicle. And for all you Europeans, just I'm going to give you a nah, 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 our cars are cheaper, <laughs> and we get them loaded, so all this stuff that you guys have to pay extra for, like leather and nice audio and heated and cooled seats, all that stuff, we go to the dealership and just pick it up like that, yep. walk away with the car. We don't pre-order them, we just get America, gosh darn it, we get everything. <laughs> Let's get back to the all-wheel drive system before we get on another tangent. Um, in terms of power, this car has a lot of power. It's got two, over 250 horsepower. Yep. Does the all-wheel drive system have any issues with that much power and that much torque? Almost, what, 290 pounds of torque or close to it? None at all. So, the because the all-wheel drive system can handle up to over 2,700 newton meters at the rear axle, for those of you not familiar with metric, uh, that it turns out to be about half of what the powertrain can put out in first gear at full throttle. So, really, in a nutshell, we don't have uh, any limitations because of the powertrain. Uh, it's actually the the Cadillac XTS twin turbo yes. has the same system yeah. uh, as, from a hardware perspective. Yeah, and it's amazing how well this car drives. I mean, I am on kind of a mixed grade right now, so I've got ice, I've got snow, I've got packed snow, and we're on 20s, which is actually worse on snow. You want the yeah. tires that cut into uh, the snow and get to the pavement where the traction is. So these big fat tires kind of tend to be right on top of it, even though we do have snow tires. And I feel completely, I mean, completely confident driving at. 60k right now it just feels uh like i'm on uh well i shouldn't say dry but it feels like i'm i'm just driving down the road and i don't feel like at any moment if i hit the brakes anybody behind us yesterday so i will not be hitting the brakes i would go you know veering into the forest here it just feels like this car would stop maybe a little bit of abs chatter but it would definitely stop in a reasonable amount of time yep